What is bloating? Bloating is a condition where your belly feels full and tight, often due to gas. People might confuse bloating with other reasons for a more noticeable belly, such as abdominal wall laxity or looseness. This is common, especially among older women and those who have had children. It's important to know the difference so you can get the right treatment. A toned abdomen can make it easier to see a difference when the gut is full of food or stool. Causes of bloating One common cause of bloating is constipation. You can be constipated and not realize it, since having fewer bowel movements than you normally do is just one symptom of constipation. You may still be constipated even if you have regular bowel movements. Other symptoms of constipation include 1. Straining to start or finish a bowel movement. 2. Stool that looks like rocks and pebbles. 3. Not feeling empty after a bowel movement. Constipation can contribute to abdominal pain and bloating. The longer your stool stays in your colon, the more time bacteria have to ferment what's there, resulting in more gas and bloating. Aside from constipation, other causes of bloating include 1. Gut sensitivity. People with IBS can be extremely sensitive to gas, which can cause pain, cramping and diarrhea. 2. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO. Most healthy people have relatively few bacteria in the small intestine. 2. People who have had intestinal surgery and or IBS with diarrhea are more likely to have SIBO, which can cause bloating. 3. Gastroparesis. This condition causes delayed stomach emptying, which can cause bloating, nausea and even bowel blockage. 4. Gynecological conditions. Sometimes problems with your ovaries or uterus may cause bloating. 4. Make sure you never skip your annual pelvic exam. How can I prevent stomach bloating? If your stomach bloating is caused by diet or alcohol, you can help prevent it by making some lifestyle changes. Some good general guidelines include 1. Eat enough fiber. 1. If you don't typically get a lot of fiber in your diet, you should start gradually so that you don't overwhelm your system. 1. Fiber will cause more gas at first, but once it starts sweeping through your digestive system, it will help clean out the fermenting fecal matter that's stuck in there. 1. Fiber also tells your body to drink more water, and it makes you feel full sooner so that you don't eat too much. 1. Finally, fiber is a prebiotic that helps feed and promote the good bacteria in your gut. 2. Drink enough water. 2. This will encourage motility along your entire digestive tract and keep your digesting food from becoming too hard and compacted to pass through. 2. Water also helps you feel full between meals. 3. Get some exercise. 3. Exercise helps prevent water retention and keeps your bowels moving. 3. It can also help prevent the rapid weight gain that often goes straight to your belly. 3. If you have a desk job, regular exercise can seem more daunting, but it doesn't take too much. Just remember to get up and walk around now and then. 4. Avoid processed foods. 4. Processed foods are low in fiber and high in salt and fat. 4. Salt causes water retention, and fat slows down the digestive process because it takes longer to digest. 4. All of these things can lead to constipation and bloating. 
4. Processed foods are also low in nutrition, so they will leave you feeling hungrier even after you've consumed a lot of calories. 4. This leads to more eating and compounding the problem. 5. Practice mindful eating. 5. Take your time to chew thoroughly and stop before you are full. 5. Feeling full is a delayed reaction because it takes a while for the food you eat to actually reach your stomach. 5. Most people eat enough to be full before they can actually feel that they are. 6. Notice sensitivities. 6. Whether it's alcohol or particular foods, just paying attention can help you notice which ingredients you are most sensitive to. 6. Some people keep a food journal and take notes to keep track of how different meals make them feel. 6. You can also try eliminating foods one at a time and notice if you experience any difference in your symptoms. 7. Hydrogen breath test. 7. This relatively simple test is an efficient way to screen for a few different digestive disorders, including specific sugar intolerances and SIBO. 7. You can take it as an outpatient or sometimes at home and have results in a day or two. 8. Targeted probiotics. 8. If your healthcare provider diagnoses you with SIBO or another gut bacteria imbalance, they can help rebuild your microbiome by reintroducing the specific bacteria that you are lacking to help balance out the ones that are dominating. If you are new at our channel, please subscribe our channel, it will be great support for us.